everybody, welcome. First parent seminar of the day. We love it. So this is um, Miss Nancy O'Meara. If you don't know who she is, I'm going to tell you who she is. She has choreographed tours for Ali and AJ, Jesse McCartney. She has done every single job with J-Lo. You name it, she's done it. So this first seminar is how to succeed in auditions. And I'm going to just kind of pass the mic to her because she is still to this day a booking choreographer and is still booking dancers. So here we go. What do you want to know? <laughs> are you guys having a good time so far? Your kids are doing great. They really are. I see some of them are get a challenge and they just keep up with it, but they're just like little sponges. They really seem to like all the choreographers. And a lot of us are wacky here in Hollywood, so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> any of you have any kids that want to pursue dance? That like to, oh, okay, all right, well. Where do you want to start? Have they been to auditions? No, do they want to? Okay, so when they're about to audition, what's the first question that they might ask you or somebody else? Wow, we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> How do you hire me? Uh, well, if you're Adrian, you call me directly. If not, you go through my agency. <laughs> do any of your kids have agents, representation? They do, okay. And where do they have that? Where is that? Clear Town. Oh, here. Okay, Clear. And you too? Okay, here in Burbank. So you guys are here in California? Living here? Okay, so you're locals. You've had In-N-Out before. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> uh, you have to start by checking out the different agencies online and then just by networking. Asking different people, go online and see if your kids sort of think like, okay, if you guys are with Clear, you can look at the Clear department, the kids' departments. And you look at that, and if, uh, if there's a kid there, then they have 18 of them that look like just like your son or daughter, I might go to a different agency. Start like that. Like, it's really just the obvious, I think, because you're not familiar with agencies or how to start. You really are. It's just like anything else. You know, and then you just check around, and then you can ask around. You can submit your things into the agency. You can take a meeting with them. You get a feeling that you like that particular agent, great. You get a feeling that you don't like that agent, then you're right. You don't go with them. They're all good, but they're all just a different fit for everybody. I like all of them. I know everybody clear at MSA. All of them are great. I'm personally with Block because they're, for me, there's just, they're opposite of my personality. They're just extremely direct and no emotion whatsoever. It's just business, and I like that, so it really works for me. They don't ever check on me and see how I'm doing, nothing, and it's okay. I don't, I don't need that, but other people need that. So if you need that, you might wanna go to a different one, like either Clear, MSA, MTA. There's, there's what, five of them that are pretty solid. You guys are happy with Clear? Who do you work with at Clear? Oh. Oh, yeah, okay, no Evolve. Okay, good. See, so there's different, all kinds of ones to go to. Go ahead. Did I just remember? <laughs> Let me really get them together now. There's Block. There's MSA. There's Movement Talent Agency. MTA is that one. Uh, evolve, as she said. I better not miss them. Go To Talent, Lisa and Terry. That was them, right? And clear is the other one. Clear. I also hear people working with them, like, I've got a little, oh, yeah, we could do, like, a $20,000 here and there. Then don't sign with that agency. That is bullshit. <laughs> Pardon me. It's not how it works. Everybody's a schemer. Not everybody's going to give it to you the way that it is. And, you know, I don't know. I would love to know who said that to you because I'll email them tonight. Oh, Seattle. Yeah, no, sorry. I like Seattle, but it's just, I don't know why, why they think, they must think that you don't know what you're doing, but you don't have to do that. Your kids train where they train. They continue to do that. They can come out here and they can still work and they can book things. You work with your agent if they don't live here in California. So if they have an audition and they want you to be here within two days, they might reach out to you and you just have to have that relationship with them so that they know that you can get out here within the next two days. And a lot of things are still self-tape, so that's beneficial as well. And they're a little bit tricky as far as that you have, they prefer the proper lighting and to actually read the breakdowns because there are kids, like you see the assistants that are here right now, those three, 
There are actually one of them isn't signed, but she will be by the end of this week because I love her and I can get her signed. Just the way they go. She's super talented, and if I put my stamp with my name on it, I'm like, definitely sign her. I mean, you've seen the, th the assistants, you know what I mean? Not only are they great dancers, but they're good humans. Otherwise, Adrian wouldn't let them stay here, you know? Just that's the way they have to be role models as well. So they will, but it shouldn't be something that's too crazy in, in, your, in your brain. And if one person says no, then you go to the next, just like anything else in life, you know? And when you think about the agents, I mean, some of them had decent dance careers and some of them didn't and maybe they didn't make it as a dancer and now they're agents. Congratulations, you found your journey, which everybody does, you know? But you wanna have a nice rapport with them because then, you know, they'll be able to submit you and, and even like, hey, because you, you know, you guys hear about everything. So-and-so got this call for this audition and most of the time now they're good because they'll send the emails and they'll say it's picture submission. So then you know, hmm, well, her, maybe they didn't like her picture. Should I maybe do new pictures? And nowadays, everybody's iPhones are better than most things. You find the right sun in the background and you snap some shots and you're good to go. It's just, but somebody else might say, you know, you're gonna have to spend $1,500 on these professional pictures. All right, well, can I use your credit card? And I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> There's different ways. It doesn't have to be, it ha doesn't have to be that crazy. When I first came out here, I didn't have the money for headshots, and so I drew my own picture. It was just my own face. And then at another time, it was a big fat baby face, and I had my name on it. And I wasn't trying to be disrespectful, I just couldn't afford it. But when they said, turn in your picture and resume, and then eventually I got the hang of it, but I actually started to book jobs because they thought it was funny. They'd never seen anything like that before. So you can take a risk. Somebody else might have seen it and thought it was disrespectful, but I just didn't have the money, but I wanted to dance and go to auditions. So I didn't think, I just thought, let me figure out something out. I didn't know. I didn't know half the things that everybody knows now, you know? Now you want to know something, you go, boop, that's it. <laughs> I don't know too many options in Kansas. How about you? No. no. <laughs> She's not bailing me out here. In Kansas, I don't. I, I certainly know of Los Angeles and New York and Atlanta at this point. You know, those are sort of like the three main hubs. But I don't know. I don't know anybody that ever, I've never met anybody that says I have an agent in Kansas. Yeah. Only if you can be there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, th you would have to, to be there, you know, and... I just don't know of a lot of uh, television production or commercials or movies or anything like that that are shot there. Normally what happen happens is they'll be hired out of New York, Los Angeles, or Atlanta, and then it would just be a location shoot, from what I know. Yeah, Atlanta's doing really well now. Yeah. Yeah, some of them are like block has, LA has block New York, and so there is the back and forth. Not so much in Atlanta out of New York and Los Angeles. Which one do you know in Northern California? I don't either. So I'm gonna say here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm open to if, if somebody wants to, you know, I always say teach me something, but I know that they're all within here, for Los Angeles anyways. Go ahead. I love Texas. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you, you know people there that are, bless you, that, that are starting or creating a talent agency, is that what you're saying? Okay. Yeah, you could see, I mean, if somebody's interested, then they just, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. They have to learn about all the union rules. There's so many things, and then for minors, everything else. It has to be somebody that has that education, how to deal with minors, and all the different funding, and how it goes, and the Coogan accounts, and all of that stuff is very important, so you need somebody. I mean, the one that, um, the youngest girl here, the assistant Ainsley, uh, the blonde, she's just turned 15. So she has all of that. So she's with Block Agency, and they have somebody that is specifically for the kids' department. So that works for her. 
and her f and for her mom as well. But they would need and they would need to get the breakdowns of the things that you know that come in as well. Right. Who would I contact? They would have to. They would have to do their own research. I mean, honestly, for me, I never wanted to be an agent, so I don't. I don't know. I've actually tempt in an agency before when you would, you know, send out submissions and things like that. But they'd have to reach out to people that are already doing it, or maybe Adrian knows. Or did you want to ask me a question? Okay, that whole journey for her. Okay, so uh, do you know which one I'm talking about? The girl that's in here? She's assisting all the classes. You'll see her later, whatever. Her name is Ainsley. She just turned 15. She was originally from Mississippi, and then her family lives now in Atlanta right now. And she's been coming back and forth because she studies at a studio that's called, it's in Brea Space. It's called The Space. It's where Autumn Miller, she's teaching here. It's her mom, Krista and Corey Miller, and they have a beautiful program there for the kids. So they find their housing. Most of the kids live together. They have a house mom, and so that's what Ainsley's been doing for the past year almost. And I don't know why her parents did it, but I've known Ainsley since she was five years old, so when she's here, I'm her legal guardian. So she has to listen to everything I say. <laughs> So when it comes to auditions and things like that, I guide her with things. When there's a self-tape or something, when her parents don't know what to do, they send it to me and then I guide Ainsley how she, how she does that. She's with an agency now, and even though she's 15, I, I want her to be very independent. So she starts with that. But she trains, a so all of these kids that are here assisting, they train in Brea, which is close to Fullerton, at a studio that's called The Space. And they have a whole program for this, you know, from they have every kind of classes. It's similar to this, all this is a little bit stronger with the faculty, I feel like. But it's a great place for, for training. The kids have all the training and then they eventually they can move into it. If you check on anything on social media, just look up the Space TV and you'll see all the kids. Have you seen it? Yeah. All the kids with, with great training. And Krista and Corey are beautiful humans. They're actually normal here in Hollywood, which is why I like working with them as well. <laughs> they really are. To be honest, I'd have to check in with my friends that are in Atlanta now. I know that one that had gone out there because she wanted to pursue acting. I have another friend that moved out there who is dancing and she's acting. But I can get that information for you. After this, I can just send a text and find out. But I believe that there's two that are pretty strong. Does anybody, has anybody heard of the ones in Atlanta? No? Uh, Kristen, who's doing the social media, she has some help with that. Okay. When is that? Um, after. Okay, Kristen, who's doing social media, Andy just said that she has information about that. So that'll be great for social media. Go ahead. Well, I don't know the studio that you're talking about, but if she's happy at her studio and she's... Yeah, absolutely. Just let it be. No, 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 no. This is for, you know, the kids that really want... So here's the thing, with Ainsley, where she was, there wasn't a studio that she felt that she could continue to grow and, and continue to train, because she used to travel on conventions and everything else. There really wasn't another outlet for her, and she really, really wanted it. So that's why her family decided to do that for her. But if, how old is your daughter? Ten. She's 10, she's got plenty of time. Oh. Yeah, no, keep her where she has the great training, and then see, because she could change her mind at 10 and a half, you know. Right now, more than anything for a resume with, with agencies, anybody that I've gotten signed within the past, maybe it's because I know them as well, but everything is social media. So I will send any for their Instagram handle to the agency, and I'll write what I know about this kid and why I think this kid would be great with this, this agency. And, they, and then they review it, and then sometimes they'll call me or sometimes they'll just email me back and say, we love her, can we have her information? I choreograph and I do creative directing for like live concerts and all the crazy Hollywood, Hollywood celebrities. I'm stuck with them. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hold on. Annie wants to say something. If you need to know how to write a resume or what kind of photos you need for headshots, I wrote a whole blog on it. It's on the website. Go check it out. They'll send you for the resume. They'll literally send you a PDF version where or a Word version where you can literally implement your own um, info into that. Go to www.hdedance.com, scroll to the very bottom, and there will be blogs, and you'll find the one that says writing how to write a dance resume. Bam. Yeah. And that's a great way to start. And then sometimes once you're signed with the agency, they basically kind of help you filter through it as well because you only need a couple 
bullet points over certain things at the beginning because you know when you're 13 and 14 you don't you know you add to it you know just put them put them on Instagram just put them on Instagram that's the first way that they're gonna look at it agents if you're trying to get an agent if you send them actually send them in a, a, a picture and a, uh, a resume and a picture they're not gonna look at it no 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 It's okay. I listen. I don't. It's not my favorite thing either. I have to post. I'd much rather post for everybody else. It just feels better for me. But if she really wants to, she has to think of it as an online resume. So do a completely separate one that is only her dancing. Have it completely separate, and that's all she posts is anything else. So anybody that looks at it can go, oh, okay. Oh, she can do jazz. Oh, good. Oh, she can do tap. Oh, oh, she. Can, wow, she's well rounded. We could probably hire her. It doesn't have to be her and her friends and you know and bathing suits at the beach like they all want to do nowadays. The agencies don't care about that, you know? So it could just be separate, and then maybe knowing that it's more for a career type of thing moving forward, totally, you know, you can have more than one account. I know this from my friends recently when I was like, oh, something about them, she was like, oh, let, let me check it from my stalker account. I'm like, stalker account? <laughs> What's wrong with you? I can barely deal with one. <laughs> Anybody, go ahead. Yes. So a lot of the dance agencies have a print department. Some do for the kids and some don't, but modeling is usually separate. Yeah, for straight modeling, yeah, sure. Actually auditioning, yeah. you, they send you a breakdown, and in the breakdown it will tell you what kind of dress. Like they'll tell you like pastels, or no hats, or sneakers, or whatever is in the breakdown. Annie just said like all black. Sometimes I'll do that, it's easier, because sometimes people walk in like characters, I'm like, so we're all black. But it, it's in the breakdown, whether it's heels, um, flats, sneakers, hip hop, the name of the choreographer, whoever the choreographer is, look them up. Whoever the artist is, if you don't know him or her, look them up. I mean, this is all you have to do is just, they all do, they were born like this. <laughs> so just look everything up. So once you do you know, that kind of research and you know what you're walking into, if there were dancers from the past, check out those dancers. You kind of get an idea of what that choreographer might be looking for. You know, the more information you have, if you're not sure if you're gonna have to bring heels, then pack them in your bag, you know? The worst thing I see with kids is when they are actually at an audition and then Maybe like the artist shows up or the manager's like, oh, I'd like to see them do something with a fire baton. You're like, ah, I forgot my fire baton. <laughs> I mean, that wouldn't happen, but you know what I mean, be prepared for everything. And then you just feel good whenever they come out, you know? And it's fun. Go ahead. <laughs> it really depends on the project. Sometimes as an artist and I need all the girls to be 5'9 and like, I need the guys to be 6'1 and they have to look like a football team. Truly, like no matter what, I don't care about anybody's sexual preference, sometimes I need that dude to dance like a man. And if he can't dance like a man for that particular artist, I can't hire you. It's just the way that it goes. And it's still like that in the entertainment business, it really is. It depends on anything. I truly always look, this, this, if there's a dancer that is the best dancer in the room, if they have a bad attitude, not for me. I don't want to babysit you. I don't want to deal with your BS. Nobody does. Nobody does. That whole scene has been gone for a long time. I always say happy to be here, easy to work with. If you can fit in that mold and you have the talent and everything else that we're looking for, then you're going to get hired. You know, you don't want to be sloppy. You want to take whatever it is that you have and just make the best of it. You know, it's just if pointy, trendy shoes come back into season, I'm not gonna wear them because my thighs are thick. They're not gonna look good on me. I'd look like tiptoe crab, but somebody else might be able to wear them, so I'm gonna wear something that's gonna look better on me. So it's that whole comparison with your kids as well. You, you can't compare, you know? Can't. Everybody's gonna, you have to wear what's good for your body and what's gonna make you shine, you know? I, yeah. There you go, that means that she's strong, and that's great. Super strong, so whatever it may be, you know, I always say thicker than a snicker, but tree trunks is worse. <laughs> Most people will tell you the up and coming influence, so to speak, or that you should post one thing every day. 
Yes, and then the great thing is if it's something that doesn't necessarily work or you need to change something, then you just take it down, you know, for your post, not your actual story, but post something every day. And you know, you can do it ahead of time. So, I mean, look at all this beautiful art that's around here. So take pictures of, you know, in different places or whatever, and then save it. So when she's having a bad day, it doesn't feel something, she's like, oh, when I was in LA and I can post this now. So it's just sort of being ahead of the game. And just again, thinking of, of it as an online resume. If somebody, if somebody came to me and told me what your daughter's name was or whatever, I would go, oh, let me look her up. And I would immediately go to Instagram. And then I would look and I would get a feel for what she looks like. And you wanna make sure what she's posting that she does look like. Because some of the kids are adding all those filters and then you meet them in person, I'm like, huh. Is that really you? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they can have fun with it, but you know, just being ahead of them, just let them take the pictures or save it. Yeah. And yeah, TikTok is great, but still for agency and everybody else, Instagram still has a little bit more of that class sass as opposed to TikTok, because the TikTok dancers are cute. Yeah, exactly. And then before there was MySpace, so one day there will be no Instagram, and then there will be no TikTok, and who knows what we'll be looking at. Planet X, who knows? <laughs> well, that's why, as long as they have fun with it. But, you know, unfortunately, if kids are getting upset with each other or whatever, it's just they're not doing it face-to-face -face anymore. They're just doing it over their phones. I'm so, not sure which one's better. Yeah, sure. Anybody else? Adrian, did you want to say something else? Then Annie, why don't you take the microphone away from me? Because you're the pro. Anyways, so um, I always like to say we have to dress the part. And I'm sure Nancy can attest to this. So if you're auditioning for a Target commercial, go to Target. What's current on the mannequins? Go to the website. If you're not going to show up to a Disney audition in a bra top, booty shorts, and thigh-high boots. Yeah, we have to have, the, have to have that clean, polished look. And I know a lot of us here are comp dancers. So... At competition, you're not going to have that extra bra strap coming off. You're not going to have those wispies. Like, we have to look polished. And you have to put the idea of yourself in that job into the director's head. Also, like Nancy said, do your research. You don't want to go audition for Kyle Hanagami, who has a Nike deal, and you show up in an Adidas shirt. That's a big no-no. Or even to his class. If he, has an, uh, if he has a deal with Nike and you're wearing an Adidas shirt, you're probably not going to make that select video that's going to get online and posted to his Instagram where he has millions of followers. So just to keep those things in mind. Also, have your materials. Have your headshots and your resumes ready. Even if you're not at that high level yet, it's okay. Just have something. Take it on a phone. Jimmy in the back corner, he does headshots for like 300 bucks. Yeah, it's Jimmy not. In the back corner, Jimmy, love, Jimmy love in the back corner. Yeah, I mean, really high professional headshots can cost upward of $1,000, $1,500. And you can find somebody in any city you're in that wants to be a photographer, videographer, whoever, to shoot for less. That being said, I always tell this story. I auditioned for a music video um, with Galen Hooks, if you guys know who she is. She's a big deal in the industry. And I showed up to the audition, and there were 300 of us there. And we handed in our headshot and resume to the assistant as we walked in. And the uh, casting assistant took the pile, and they were separating it into two. Didn't know what they were doing. I was assuming it was boys and girls. We did not get numbers. So then they called us onto the floor, five at a time, by our first names. About 150 people in, she said, Galen came onto the floor, she goes, okay, if, you, if I, your name did not get called, your headshot and resume is in this pile, and they were not stapled together, and I'm so sorry, we don't have time to go through these. Try again next time. And and it's just, it goes to show, like, that's kind of like what could happen out here because your headshot and resume wasn't stapled, and they don't have time to do it for 150 people. So are you showing up not only with your headshot and resume, are you showing up with a stapler? Are you showing up with safety pins so your number doesn't come off? If you show up to an audition in the same outfit as somebody else, wearing a purple top with black pants, and Nancy's in the same thing, and we look alike, I'm going to go change. Having a second option. I tend to get really sweaty when I dance. But I know I have this one audition look that works for me. It's a green top. So I know if I'm going to sweat through that green top, at the end of auditions, you usually get put on film, and you usually record for a camera so they can review it later. So what I'll do is I have that exact same green top, throw it off because that one got sweaty, because the last thing you want to do is be on film in a gross shirt. I'll put a clean one on. Same thing, before I'm going on camera, I'm touching up my lipstick so I look presentable on camera. If I have time, maybe I touch up my hair. 
But if we're going by numbers, and I know I'm later down the line, and I'm a number 200, yeah, I could do that. But if we're getting called out by names, we don't always know. So you just have to be ready. Anything about follow up for that? Because yeah. that is true about the stapling. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. But I guess I'm nicer than Galen, and I'll let her know that I do have a stapler there. But I make them do it. <laughs> but what she was saying, it's one of my pet peeves. But and I don't do this. But a lot of people will. There'll be so many people there, and they collect everybody's picture and resume at the beginning. And it's so unfortunate because if you don't wind up getting the job, or even if you don't get a call back, those pictures and resumes just go right in the trash. So I don't do that. I wait until I get down to my last group of people, and then I take their pictures and resumes. And if I wind up hiring them and I don't need them anymore, I give them back. Because I remember, I didn't have them. I had to work hard to make money for them. But some people, they just take them and they don't think anything of it. you know. So, but yeah, a lot of them could go in the trash. But yeah, what she said, just being organized. I mean, it's a way of, of even showing up. If you show up in your resume and everything is just kind of not together, then it just gives you the idea that maybe you're not together. So will you make your lobby call on time? Will you be on the bus going on tour at the right time? Will you be at the airport on time? If you can't simply staple your picture and resume, I don't know if I'm gonna trust you. If I have time, I can train you a little bit, but it's just better if you can show up and do that. If you can learn all this choreography, you can staple your picture and your resume together. Pretty simple. Anybody else? Anybody gonna dance at Universal tomorrow? Hey. Who's going on Jurassic Park? Yeah. That's my favorite. Back to back to back. How are we doing? Auditions for when you're with, no, you. Parent etiquette on auditions with kids? Yeah. I don't let them in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> People yesterday were asking, like, you know, how can I be supportive and not be like, did you get the job as soon as, like, the kids walk out of the room or young adults? So advice for that. My advice would be when your kid has a bad day or, d or doesn't get an audition or anything else, when they walk out of the room, don't talk about it right away. There's no reason to talk about it right away. There's so many other things. Are you hungry? You want to get in and out? You want to do something else? You know that that's all in there, but you don't have to bring it up right away. It's like, there's your wound. Let me pour salt in it. Let's talk about something that you don't want to because you're a teenager. Just don't. And I know that it's hard. Trust me. I know that it's hard. But then you just wait for it. And then th another time comes up, something else comes up and be like, how did you feel about that? And it's so much easier. It really is. Not all of your kids are going to get every audition. They're going to get cut. It's just the round. If they don't like personal rejection, they are in the wrong business. Completely wrong business. Some people will just keep you out there, and they'll have you dance the whole time. And then at the end of the audition, they're like, oh, by the way, we needed five, nine, and only blonde girls. Why'd you waste my time? Well, because some choreographers have an ego the size of Hollywood themselves. And it happens. It happens. But all you can do is just be supportive and be smart, you know? If, you, if your daughter thinks that she's unbelievable at tap and you know she's not that great, don't lie to her. Just be quiet. Let her stay on her journey, and then she'll figure that out as well, you know? You don't need to hold them back. You just don't. Like, there, everybody, like, there must be so much love in it, and maybe she's not gonna be on Broadway with tap, but maybe she's gonna produce the next tap show. You don't know. You don't know, you can't judge just by this because there's so many other things that they can do within the dance world. Ev so many other things, right? You were talking about that the other day. Yeah. yeah, it really is. And it can be fun. You just have to be kind of, you know, open about it and look at all the things. If they want to be an actress, what are they watching on TV? Emulate something on TV. Get that script from the TV. Talk to yourself in the mirror. You want to hire arch in your legs? Brush your teeth in first position releve every single day. Go for the simple stuff. It really does work. And now we're serving a round of margarita. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. How old? Okay. Completely different. I'm one of six, and my parents adopted a seventh. We all did different things, and it wasn't until I got older I just thought my parents didn't care about my feelings because there were so many of us. And then it was when I was, in my, when I think it was 18, when I moved out here, they laughed, and we said, no, we just wanted you to figure out how you were feeling on your own, and then when you were ready to talk about it, you would talk about it. Sometimes we would, whatever, so I learned that from my parents. You know, and just keep that with, with the kids and everything else, and even the grandkids that I have. You know, you just 
keep it simple, you know, and having two just like that, they are going to deal with things differently. You can be aware, but they're going to grow up and they're going to find their way and their independence. And so, you know, I always want to say it's easy to keep the leash, but the minute that leash is gone, you're like, whoa, this is okay now. It's actually okay now. They're fine. If they're really, really thirsty, they'll find water in there, you know? It's just like that, although, you know, we want to be there. But I see all the kids, as soon as one of the mom's head's in the window, they're like, get out, get out. <laughs> yeah, and then they're 17 or 18, and they want to move to Hollywood, and they can't wait to have you around, and your checkbook. <laughs> you can remind them of that, too. <laughs> And don't be a helicopter mom or dad. Oh my gosh, and I get to say that here. It's just too much, you know, it's, it really isn't. It's not doing anything for the kid when you're even on convention and in classrooms and mom's trying to like get up as close as you possibly can and like smile, smile, you know? Let them learn their choreography, meet new friends and they, you'll have a chance for the video. And uh, you know, just let them enjoy it as well. It's like, it can be kind of cool, you know? You guys shouldn't be walking in here with your shoulders up like this when your kid's in class like, hey, you know? <laughs> Just let them go. I mean, you know when you were a kid, the things that you did, and you didn't want mom and dad always on your butt, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you could do that. <laughs> but walk in like this. We just learned to step outside. <laughs> 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 it's okay, you're going with an entrance. Well, it was nice chatting with you guys. I'm going to see you guys again at 4, I think, 4 o'clock this afternoon. And so I'm going to give it back to Annie. Let's give it one more time for Miss Nancy O'Mara.